Plump Goops Podcast. Get a load of these hot takes at high stakes. Get a load of these hot takes at high stakes. Get a load of these hot takes at high stakes. Get a load of these hot takes at high stakes. Howdy, folks, and welcome back to Hot Takes High Stakes, the greatest podcast who that has a rotating cast, but not really a rotating cast because we just all were on an episode together like less than a month ago. We were? Yeah. Yeah, we were. It was one we talked about like marathon. Oh, the marathon and, one. Yeah. I still hate that take. Dude, I think there's a party on my rooftop, but like it's a Thursday, so technically it's not allowed. Also COVID. Dude, call them out. Report it. Let dude, let that that's that's gonna be the you should you should go up and interview all of them. <laughs> that's the podcast. There there's also multiple multiple times where we've had people skateboarding on our roof. That's really? terrible. Are you guys the only people who have access to your roof or I guess more people no. do? Well once you get into the building. building, you can just go up the elevator to the roof level. I see. Yeah, you should you should call them out. Maybe I will after this. Well, I'll do a little little vlog. <laughs> put it put it up on the Mountain Men Vids Instagram story. You should go live, actually. <laughs> go live. <laughs> go live. That'd be crazy. Um, this is yeah, this is Hot Takes Ice Takes, the podcast where we each dish out a hot take, the hottest takes that really are you could fi- you can find the hottest takes you can find anywhere, anywhere in the world. They're here. I would argue that someone out there has the hottest take on the planet. What's the hottest? And that man is named Ronick. <laughs> <laughs> so he's on the pod. That's someone so on, the podcast, on the podcast, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so come. But he's the, out there. This is the podcast that you can come to to hear all the drivel that Ronick spits out on a. On the a, what? The drivel. Like you. dribbling. S- s- no, dribble? drivel. Drivel. You never heard that word? Drivel? No, I have not. It's like, I've, it's like nonsense. Luckily, basically. Not. I pictured dribble as in like when saliva just like yeah, dribbles out too. of your mouth. Yeah. Oh that no. Was, that was gross. Hell no. You, honestly, that would be better. That'd be better. Not than mutually be exclusive. Honestly. <laughs> True. Drib, drivel can dribble. I do. I yes. do have a. I, I. I am getting over a cold as we speak. So that's why I might sense. How how cold was your cold? My cold was pretty cold. Um, no, it actually like I've just been on like constant like Robitussin, Dayquil, and um, on that Tussin. Cool. On the, the Tuss, tussin? I was I've been Tussin, but it, at, at worst it was just like uh, my like a a runny nose, a runny runny nose. So, Maybe your uh, hot take can get rid of your cold. My cold, cold. Um, it, my so th- that does get us into the takes portion. Does anyone have a warm up take before we start? I, I unfortunately don't. Free pair of sunglasses to everyone. That's a. It should it should be a health, oh, health okay. subsidy. It should be a health wow. subsidy. I like that. They're so cheap. It's really easy. You should sunglasses run on a platform. Are good for you. They're good. For, they're they're good for you. Why? What, what's uh, the benefit? Eye protection, UV protection for your eyes protects yeah. the wrinkles, mm-hmm. the skin around your eyes. Um, what um, if you just didn't go outside? Uh, well, then you just don't need to use your sunglasses. Then you're not getting enough vitamin D. But then why should I pay taxes if I stay inside and don't need sunglasses? Why should I pay for other people have sunglasses? Mm, Sam, <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> What do you think about that? What do you think about Corey not having human decency? Yes. Um, huh? I respect it, his opinion. I prefer the term individualistic. <laughs> yeah. I've ever heard of freedom? I'm <laughs> I'm me first. There's barking happening. Um, I think your dog agrees with Corey. Yeah, I don't know what she's barking at. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Is your door oh, open? Man. Let me see. You guys um talk about sunglasses or whatever. I don't want to talk about sunglasses. No, that's just literally off the top of my because I saw a pair of sunglasses but on my. Did desk. you seal from Austin East Siders the pint glass? I've never been. I bought this from Central Market. I've been meaning oh. to go. 
It's Can really you, good. Also, you, hot take, stealing pint glasses from restaurants <laughs> is fine. It's, it's morally part of the bill. neutral. It's part uh Wait, so like they just gave you that when you went and then you just kind of like left with it? Well, I didn't leave with it. It was my roommates that took it because I don't like stealing stuff. Yeah. But I'm not saying they're in the wrong. Someone left something at my door. Why? I don't know. I stared at them though. We have this big window in the front of our house. What do you say we move on? (laughs) All right, let's move on. Corey, what's your take then? Mm. If you have such more interesting to talk about, what's your take then? You're you're asking my take. I'm asking your take. Let me think about it for a little bit. Oh, here's a take. Don't act like you just thought about this. Don't like, act like you just thought of this off the top of your dome. You are still a child if you eat your eggs over hard. Oh. Like if you don't want to run a yolk? <laughs> See, there's like over hard as in where the yolk is completely cooked through and chalky and disgusting. Like a hard boiled egg. Like a hard boiled egg or an over hard fried egg. Right. Although... I, some people, when they make over hard eggs, they like break up the yolk, which is yeah, hard. yeah. So let's is go that okay? Um, hard boiled egg. Or you're still a child if you eat hard boiled eggs. Is okay, I don't know if I agree with the hard boiled egg one, but I can get behind the over. I'm just an anti fully cooked yolk person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're still a child if you prefer fully cooked yolk. What about me? Yeah, just get over it. I break I break my yolk when You're I put it in, in an egg sandwich. You're a child. When I put it in an egg sandwich, I just don't want. You're a child for eating an child. egg sandwich. That's why. Yeah. So <laughs> See, I I've never seen anyone order an over hard egg. I have. I so used at, to, but I was still a child. <laughs> at our university, in the dining hall, when the dining hall was mm-hmm. still open, Corey, you J2? know this. J two. There's an egg line. And the line is specifically made to order eggs. And it was the greatest thing. Because, okay. you know, the dining hall, it can be very hit or miss some days. But you know that the egg line... They well, always got your back. It'll, and it comes with, like, a variety of breakfast foods. Mm. Every single meal of the day. Wow. And so I would see people regularly get over hard. And I would be disgusted. Okay. And that was me. Really? You, you were one of those people. As late I as was. college, you were a child. When did I you was. become a man? Um, probably midway through sophomore year. Okay. That's when you became a man. Okay. I what became is- a man in high school. Distinctly remember. I made my own egg for the first time. And I made it runny. And it was delicious. What if I've never ordered over hard? Have I always been a man? Well, I... I was just saying, if you prefer fully cooked yolk, like okay. where it's basically dry. I d- yeah, definitely not. I agree. Hey. I've, I've, so what, what, what are the qualities? Like, like, are there quality shifts in a person once they get over that? Once they get over that? I think it speaks, to, a man. It's, it speaks to them like, as a whole, right? If you're willing, if you're so tunnel visioned, Mm-hmm. on hard yolks like what does that say about you as a person whereas if you're open okay. and like you're ready to take that step into the foray of like jammy or runny yolks yeah. then it's like i understand that you're willing to take steps into the world now instead of being enclosed in your own box hmm. yeah i like that the idea that open-minded people will try runny eggs not that, not even runny. It could be like gooey even. Do you, yeah. do you think that it's it it's a picky taste. eater thing to get uh, over hard? Hot take. Picky eaters, get over it. That's <laughs> yeah, what I have to say. I 100% agree. But I was I'm kind of there I think well. with eggs, I think that's separate from picky eaters because mm-hmm. some people will, will have over hard eggs or fully cooked yolk and they'll never really try runny eggs because it's like, it's kind of like, it's, it, it's gross whenever you're gr- like a kid, right? And you mm. don't want to eat a runny yolk because like, it will like uncooked, disgusting, whatever. But then 
later on, it's almost like, you know, people like this. Like, I'm going to try it. Right. I guess it's similar, but like you're still eating the egg, you know? Yeah. Piggy yeah. eaters are more like, I don't like eggs or something. I have so, an anecdote. Okay, what's that? So, my brother, mm-hmm. he actually got turned off to at least super runny eggs. Like, literally, like, oh. bar- like barely cooked. The reason being, he was sitting in that same dining hall, and he was watching someone eat, like, a really runny egg. And he saw them pick up the plate and drink the egg off the mm. plate. And no. it just ruined runny eggs for him. Yeah. And, like, that is understandable. Yeah, I, that but, would ruin it for me. Yeah, I, that's just a fun anecdote. It's it's not a gender exclusive thing, right? Like you, it's just like a child to an adult, as opposed to a boy to a man. Yeah, you're right. Well, is it, but you become. I don't. I just what wasn't clear. Okay, yeah. I think you originally said you're not a child anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You're a child yeah. until you stop eating. But we yeah. become men because we're right. Of um, course, yeah. Because we are. I, so I've I've always been a man then. If I've never you always you always like running. I've always hated chalky yolk, yeah. 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 But people I feel like people will eat it just because they think runny is so disgusting. Mm. Not that they've tasted it at all. It's just that like they don't want to even try it because like you yeah. like that's like I'm looking at fucking salmonella. I'm like, no, it's cooked, yeah. but it's still runny. Yeah. You know. Can I can I get back to the egg sandwich thing? Because yeah. you seem to dismiss it. Um, I the, the reason <laughs> I break my yolk when I cook my egg sandwich is because I don't want to bite into my sandwich and just have yolk explode everywhere. You know what I mean? Okay, that's fine. Um, but then you, you it's said it's more of a structural thing. Yeah, you said that you're a child because you eat egg sandwiches. I <laughs> okay. That, I it does not hold true. It is less of an egg sandwich than a breakfast sandwich. I'll say that as well. I thought at, at first you were saying that you don't like runny eggs. No. I yeah, break I, them I, I in my really. egg sandwiches. Here's a suggestion for you, Cameron. Yeah. Just scramble <laughs> your eggs. <laughs> yeah. That's no, no, I don't like scramble. I don't, I don't want to scramble because that's number one, that's more work. And number two, it, it changes the taste. Do an in pan scramble, you know? No, I've never done Whoa. an in pan scramble. Gordon Ramsay scramble. Okay. That's uh, a how does too- he okay. do it? Cameron, here's a little. Here's I've a little into Gordon Ramsay recently, actually. You crack the egg in the pan, mm-hmm. and then you just take your spatula and you just stir it in the pan until it's done. But it's uh, the way I do it. I create almost an egg and cheese patty, and the scrambled eggs would kind of go against that. You know what I mean? Would it though? I think so. It would change See, the sandwich, is... Sam. It would change the sandwich. Open-mindedness, Cameron. This is where we're going. Sam, I'm about to be in Austin. Will you let me cook you an egg sandwich? I will. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Interesting. You should, we should, whenever we all come to my place, we should yeah. all just cook egg sandwiches. Oh, also, an egg sandwich cook-off. You, you guys will be amazed by the size of our balcony. I don't know, Sam, I think you've already been. Yes, sir. No. I haven't been to the balcony. Okay. There, we have a talk. straight up terrace. It's massive. And Interesting. You'll, I think you'll appreciate it. Well, so I'm going to be right back. I'm getting another <clears throat> water. Another, yeah, of course. Another, another, <laughs> another pale ale water for Corey. See, I think I've told you my sandwich before, and I think you said that it sounds really good. No, yeah. You, you told me about your sandwich. Mm-hmm. But it is, so it's a broken yolk. Are you willing to accept the broken yolk, or do you want how me to not hard, break the yolk? How hard is the yolk? I can understand. It's still a little bit runny. Like you, you still get a little bit of runniness it's there. Oh, not as, chalk. if it's a little bit runny, that's fine. You, it it doesn't. Okay. No, it doesn't taste like chalk at all. I think there's a difference between a yolk being set and a yolk being chalky. If it's the first brec- if it's the first sandwich on that pan, then it's going to be more runny than the last one. I'll say that. Because the hotter the pan, the quicker it cooks the yolk. You know what I mean? Yeah. No foam, as they say in the South. Is that how they say it in the South? <laughs> yeah, in other places, but also this. It's like an all-inclusive thing. I've been getting into Gordon Ramsay to further the Gordon Ramsay point, um, specifically Hotel Hell 
Dude, Hotel Hell is the best. He always sleeps in the bathtubs. It's so funny. <laughs> Why does he sleep? I, I've just been seeing Because he doesn't clips. trust the bed. Is it because he doesn't yeah, trust the bed? Yeah, because they do like a blacklight thing. And yeah. there's like oh, stains sh- everywhere. But like there's obviously going to be. Yes. Because that's it's, just, you know, how it works. What I think is comical doesn't is. Doesn't mean it's not clean though. He storm, Gordon Ramsay storms out like five times per episode. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually it's it's obscene. Like he'll have an argument with the owner and be like, "I'm going," and then he'll it'll just be like a long scene of him walking, and then being like, "Gordon, no," and like he'll ju- he'll be walking out, and you'll just see a door slam, and he'll be gone. It's crazy. He's actually like, a really nice guy in real life. Apparently. Yeah. Well, have you seen um, Master Chef? Yeah, heard of it. He's actually quite cordial in Master Chef. Oh, I'm pretty sure he's wait. pretty philanthropical as well. Good. Well, he so no, Master Chef. Whenever they're cooking, like they do the kitchen mm-hmm. episode where there's like a red and blue kitchen. That's He's different. Ruthless. That's um. That's that's not Master Chef. That's a Hell's different kitchen. show. Hell's Kitchen. That's Hell's Kitchen. I thought Hell's Kitchen was when he goes to different restaurants. No. No, that's different too. He has a million a shows. Show. Hell's Kitchen's a, like a game show. Yeah. Ho- Master Chef is like an individual competition, much like the Great British Baking Show, um, where it's an individual thing and there are no teams. Well, there's no teams, but they separate it like one time to red and blue. Mm. Oh, are you looking it up? Wait, wait, wait. Look at Master Chef. It's not the show you're thinking of. Oh, he's with other people on Master Chef. Yeah, it's not just him. It's him and um, some other chefs. And what's the one? What's the one where he goes to different restaurants and writes them. That's da- Kitchen Nightmares. Kitchen Nightmares. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's, it's much like Hotel Hell. It's just, he has so many shows. So many shows. And there there was one there was one moment, much like the blacklight moment that you were talking about, um, where he had like this test kit where it's like a swab and you swab the carpet. And he took this swab and he swabbed this carpet and like a healthy rating is like 30. Anything like that's not even healthy. That's like pushing it in terms of cleanliness. That's like, that's like the borderline. borderline. Yeah. Um, anything over that is very bad. Like unhealthy to stay there. He swabbed this carpet. 850 was the rating. 850. <laughs> Like they didn't vacuum in their entire life. Yeah, like bad. And in that same instance, and like one of the owners admitted to have having had diarrhea on the floor of the bathroom and just not cleaning it. Just being like, gah, I'll head out. Is this a joke? Oh it's insane. God. He is cool. Like he he um he argues for uh he argue like so many owners like don't give their w- workers tips. Do I know? He it's just he so goes funny. in on the owners who don't give them tips. Yeah. So he's he's all for the workers. Gordon Ramsay does Gordon Ramsay have the hot takes high stakes endorsement? Yeah. Oh, I'd give him mine. All right, that's our first celebrity endorsement. You would support the runny egg thing, probably, right? You you yeah. think? Oh, a hundred percent. He probably knows how to make a really good. Over. Well, he does his scrambled eggs where. It, it's so smooth. It's basically like a spread on toast. Yeah. You take Whoa. a bite. Have you ever made those, Sam? I've tried. It's not my favorite because I want like it's a little so structural good. integrity. But runny, uh, what is it called? Soft scramble. It's a, it's a vibe. You should look okay. into it. Look and into speaking of, I won't. So. Speaking of food takes, I have another food take. I feel like I do a lot of food takes. We, we, um, we haven't agreed or disagreed with oh. twice. That was a good segue, though, Sam. Apologies. Um, I, I agree, but I'm like in, in like a 5.8 in terms of agreeing. <laughs> yeah. Would four, well, like a five, oh my God, would a four be sub, sub five is disagree, yeah. Five is literally indifferent. Yeah. Um, I would, I would agree. I like, a 7.3 because I really despise hard yolks. <laughs> well, there you go. Have we had anyone ever be indifferent? Yes. Uh, Resma, I think, abstained from my, la- from my take last week, which was that red is the most important color. 
That is okay. a <laughs> okay. Because he said it didn't it didn't mean anything to him. <laughs> All right, Sam. Is he colorblind? <laughs> I am. Oh, not that bad though. So, Ooh, um, wait. um, sorry. I was trying to say something real fast. Sam can never I give was, his take. Yeah, <laughs> I was somehow came across a tweet that had very few likes, like five likes or something, and it was in a thread. It, there was like a highlight for a soccer game, and it was a comment on. It. And it was someone that was like complaining about the jerseys. And I was like, why are they complaining about the jerseys? Mm -hmm. Turns out it was like someone that was colorblind and the jerseys look the exact same. What if you Whoa. were colorblind? And I didn't even think about that. <laughs> that they were talking about how it's like a huge problem and like no, people just disregard it. That's insane. I didn't even think about that. Like it was like red and green. So yeah. I, I guess it's like that's if you're red, red, green, green colorblind, blind, that would be bad. Yeah. That's a common colorblind. <laughs> but they were they were so mad. Like, they were like, "How do they let this happen?" <laughs> and I was just thinking, do people actually do the owners and stuff, or the, the league actually take that into account? It's Definitely probably like the P just, it's like the PR, or like the design. Yeah. You got to make the design different enough as well as the color. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's what you get for having boring jerseys. All right, Sam. Introduce okay. yourself and give us your take. Transition. Um, I'm not going to introduce myself. Yeah, introduce yourself, Sam. Uh, go, go, go ahead and introduce yourself. So I was in my kitchen uh, a little while ago. There is a backstory. And I, was, I just had the thought that just all... Okay, I'm trying to word this right. Mm -hmm. All mechanic, all electronic kitchen gadgets that could be manually performed, get rid of them. Like electric can openers, gone. Okay. Uh, like, what about blenders? Gone. Well, they okay, don't not really blender. have mechanical. Not You're blenders. weakening it already. You're weakening it already. You can mechanically a food, blend. A food, a food processor, gone. Wait, why not blenders? Why not get rid of blenders? Blenders are different than because there's not really a viable, uh, there's not really a viable mechanical version. No, that's not viable though. Why is that not viable? How did they make cake Wait, what is back this? in the day? What is this? They didn't make blenders for cake. Cake what? for a smoothie. Yeah, cake batter. Like, if you cake batter. Smoothie, you can't. You don't use oh, blenders. blenders. I was thinking. I was thinking mixers. <laughs> <laughs> stand mixer. Yeah, get rid of a stand mixer. Okay. Hand mixer. Get rid of a hand mixer. Okay. With your hand? Yeah. Sorry sorry about the blender Wait. thing. That was my bad. <laughs> That's mechanical. Do you use Yeah, no, get rid of the electrical and make yeah, it a oh, mechanic. Okay. What else? G give us more. Uh, see, but a toaster? You can toast really... things you can toast things on a pan. Yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah. No, oh, okay. You lost waste me. Of space. You lost me. <laughs> waste, waste of, of space. space. Okay, why don't you do it, Sam? Why don't you do it? It's do not it mine to throw away. It's not mine to throw away. Toast it, but then don't use it. You don't have to use it. I won't. I haven't. Pan fried bread is different from toasting bread. Yeah. Okay, because like you can make the same argument. You like just like oven, get out of here because you is can it just pan fried it. No, but you can't. No. You can't cook everything. That that's you what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The toaster. The toaster is different from pan. I'm talking about like electric can opener. Yeah, yeah. Like, I kind of disagree yeah, with that, it. Corey. I kind of disagree with that. You think a toaster is the same as pan frying shit? I think it's almost always. I think you can almost all like name one thing that's different that you can't do on a pan. It's a different charring. If, it's like direct yeah. heat versus like convection heat. There are definitely mechanical alternatives though to, well, to a toaster. Like you can put something in like one of those things, like what you close it and you put it over the fire. A panini fire. maker? No, not a panini maker. Oh. Um, you know what I'm talking about, Sam? Like a clamp. Yeah, like, like a, yeah, I know. Like you close it around it and you put it over the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Would we get rid of toast or <laughs> Yeah, get rid of them. Because <laughs> it's so quick to toast stuff that I would, I think a toaster is very viable to have. Right, but wait, wait Sam. About. Why though? Why? Because it's just a waste of space. <laughs> it's just a waste. Of, but what about time? What about what about the amount of time that it saves you? 
Is it worth the space? Is the time worth the space? No. Wow. Oh, Cameron, did you know you have a a wine bottle opener, like a cork opener that it blows air? I have? Yeah, it's in your house. We were Okay, so backstory. <laughs> I was what? I was uh sitting your house or yeah. some shit. Yeah. And we we went to drink at mm-hmm. your place because like <laughs> we're in high school. Of course. <laughs> Whatever. Or we we didn't want to do it at where parents were. Mm-hmm. We did at yours. And we were looking for a wine, like we were looking for a corkscrew, but we couldn't find it. And then I like got something out of your drawer. I was like, what is this? And it was just like a little little handle and then had like a point and then a button. Yeah. And you stab it into the cork and all the way through and then press the button and it goes and then just like <laughs> pops out. That's crazy. Uh, I've never it's used it amazing. before. I didn't know we had that. But I would, I, that's technically mechanical. So I'm a fan of the traditional wine bottle opener, the twist and then like yeah. lever. I'm a fan. It's yeah. part of the um, enjoyment of opening a new bottle. Yeah, I, I also like it. People can't fucking use corkscrews properly. It's very sad. It's all about practice. But they don't, like, they, they turn it in. And mm-hmm. they don't use like the metal thing oh, to the go lever? to the edge. Yeah, yeah, they don't use a lever at all. They, they just, just try like, to rip it out and try to rip it out. <laughs> it's so hard to rip that out. Like, what do you really think? Impossible, is Sam. Mm-hmm. What? So what else? <laughs> what else are like? What? You're just saying that it's a waste of space. You just want to save space. Yeah, and like hand mixers and stand mixers, mm-hmm. you can live without them. Yeah. yeah, it seems like you're just arguing like to go back, but then you have to get like the a whisk yourself like you, you have to replace those things with other things it's not like the people who have that don't already have a whisk that is true if you have like an electric thing you also probably have the mechanical thing as well exactly i'm just gonna argue yeah. that a lot of times it doesn't really save that much time in the first place like opening a can with a mechanical can opener really doesn't take that long what are we talking like five seconds it's max true open a can and people be uh, a and, non-broken and, can and people become more proficient and yeah. skilled in those kinds of things i think it gives you a sense of intentionality within the kitchen you know what do you mean <laughs> it's a process yeah and you have to embrace it you get down and dirty or get out <laughs> get or down and dirty or get out you know how people would use an extremely derogatory term like get in the get back in the kitchen you know remember when that was a thing to like a woman totally yeah yes. yeah it's still I'm a thing t- on TikTok I, and I'm, so it's just still a thing i was saying that dude misogynist tiktok is awful and really prevalent it every time there's a tiktok of women sports or like i have warzone tiktok and mm-hmm. there's some girls that play yeah in every single time the girls are playing it's about how the people other people in the lobby basically just say make me a sandwich or go back to the kitchen or some yeah. shit and then the comments are like the same yeah and it's just so annoying like or, how, or yeah. like I'll, I'll just be scrolling and i'll get like three in a row of like objectively funny like com- like comedy skit skits or like imp- impersonations done by women and then I'll scroll through all of them and I'll look at the comments for each of them. And woman. all of them, no, all of them, they'll say, we found the one funny woman. Like, oh. like funny women do exist. And like, but they're like the, almost half of my uh, for you page is like women being funny. And I'm yeah, like almost all of them. Cool. There are people being like, we found the one funny woman when like there have been like 10. There, yeah. All the time. There will just sometimes. I, what I'm talking about is people, it's not like stand-up comedy, yeah, but no, it will yeah. just be like, like fucking TikTok, right? Or like yeah. some Vine style TikTok. Yeah. And people will just be like, not funny. Well, 400,000 people disagree. Yeah. So what is, it's so stupid. That's why I think that women, women will never truly be, 
woman being equal is the last thing that will ever happen in society. You mean like being seen as equal, not yeah, being like objectively yeah. equal. Yeah. Because it's just like... Because of embedded misogyny. It's, there's so much all the time, regardless yeah. of anything. It's so annoying. I would, yeah. say, I would say TikTok is like the majority of c- comedy TikTok. Like I'm not talking about like stand-up comedy. I'm talking about just like, like, like a Vine, you know? Yeah. I would say the majority of comedy TikTok is carried by women. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I've seen a lot of a all lot the of funny the ones I've seen on Twitter of TikTok are women. Women, yeah, yeah. Or it's not noticeable. It's not you know skewed towards yeah. Or like guys. I don't know. If 100% it's funny, it's not skewed towards guys. Yeah. If anything, it's skewed. Towards if it's funny, guys. it's funny. I think. <laughs> there so. you go. Um, Anyways, what I was saying was, <laughs> yeah. Instead of get back in the kitchen, get out of the kitchen. If you if you can't like you know oh I see what you're saying like if you can't do the, <laughs> if you can't do the work get out of the kitchen yeah I agree if you can't take as the Gordon Ramsay Gordon Ramsay would agree did he coin that term if you can't take the heat get out of the kitchen no that's like a that's like a bin hat saying okay um I just like noticed something so to preface this I went to a career fair or UT's expo for mm-hmm. engineering and I talked to this company like three semesters in a row and I finally got an interview because I actually had a background and previous experience and okay. I interviewed them and they said they would get back either way if I got it or because I had an interview usually when you get to the interview stage they yeah. let you know yeah, you yeah. didn't get it or to get it or They basically ghosted me and I got a business card from and it was a human HR manager named Jennifer Harris. I emailed her and got ghosted again. Can we just take a look at how this business card is cut off? <laughs> we should uh, blur this probably. Yeah, you just the... you just showed all of Jennifer Harris's contact information. <laughs> you can see the S on the side of the business card. Yeah, yeah Corey, that, that happened. It. That happened to my girlfriend too. She um she actually had she used to intern at this place, and then she interned for like a another position, and she interviewed, and never she called the place three times, and they're it's it's so annoying like. What are you supposed to do? Just call me like, again? At, at least give him a no. Like, just give him a yeah. no, yes or no. Like, it's, yeah, it's how hard is that? I don't even care if they're polite. Just say yes or no. Right? I've certainly yeah. gotten ghosted. So you can move on. So you're not waiting for something that will never happen. Like that before. Okay, Corey, do, what do you say? Agree or disagree with Sam's take that everything that can be mechanically replaced should be? Are you including toasters? Yes. Disagree. Specifically the... The pop-up toaster, specifically that poster. toaster. I, Not like I, a toaster oven. I also no. disagree. I think that you're, you're just going to replace it with, honestly, mechanical things that take more space, is my, is my take there. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. All right. <laughs> Paul. Mine's only because of the toaster issue. All right. Well, <laughs> Whatever. my take. Oh, you want to know my take? Here it is. Gordon yeah. Ramsay has a toaster. That's all I'm going to say. All right. My take is this. If the world, kind of, it's kind of like Sam's. If humans were stripped of all that they'd accomplished, mechanically, technologically, and sent back to like, like we're living off the land, we have no technology, we have, like we, we are living basically in like the prehistoric ages, like the, the first humans who were on the earth, we have what they had hunters gatherers humans despite their intellect would immediately be wiped out why do you say that because number one we're soft now like what do you mean okay immune system wise so you you're saying that like if you took me but yeah. so the knowledge that the knowledge is also wiped no so just, no no the knowledge is not wiped so if i literally got teleported naked to the to like 300,000 BC. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. No. 
No, no, no. Are you saying the not entire 300,000 BC? Yeah, the entire species, we would go extinct. No. So false. Why? Why is it false? This is, okay. This is why, because if we have the knowledge, yeah. give us a couple years and we have swords again. Right, but there's literally people that still are primitive. No, I know, but as a whole, <laughs> I think we would die. I think I think our population would be severely cut. That's yeah. for certain. Yeah, I didn't. I'm. I want to talk this one through because I didn't think of it. I haven't fully fleshed it out. Okay. But I think number one, mosquitoes would destroy us. False. I think that global warming, what we've done to the planet so far, will destroy us without any of our modern, uh, without any of our modern technology. Oh, so we're still in the current year. We're still in the current like, year. We're just stripped of everything that we've created. But then global warming would, I mean, it wouldn't be. Yeah, it would slow down, wouldn't it? But yeah. it would slow down because. The <laughs> earth is healing. <laughs> yeah. The earth would definitely heal if we were stripped of everything. But here's another thing. So many people live in places where they could only live with modern technology and with what we've done so far. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they, I, there would be mass migrations to places of plenty where not everyone could survive off of that. Widespread famine. I think our population would have definitely be cut by I think a significant amount, but the there's herd, no way we would go extinct. The herd will be culled. But so like, let me graph. Let me yeah. graph this real quick. So it's like, wait, which side of the screen am I on to you? Uh, you you're on my right. Board, share your screen with the old whiteboard. Are you, are you going to share your screen and do a whiteboard? Host has disabled screen sharing. <laughs> oh, Cameron just, is a Nazi. Sam, just, 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 just uh, describe it. Okay, so I'm going to go from this way to this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of population. So we're here. Yeah. A little over 7 billion. Mm-hmm. And then Cameron's finger snap happens. Yeah. And then we slowly go down, right? Okay. And like, it's, it's probably I, think there would, like, I think there would be panic and war at first. It's probably going to go like this. Yeah. But then we're going to climb back up. You think we're going to climb back up? That was a good like, climb up, by the way. Not to the same level to like <laughs> yeah. here. But this, to this time well, scale. We would like, just be another animal probably. A couple, until, a couple hundred years. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I think, no, with the knowledge we have right now, the only thing we're missing is the infrastructure. That's it. How long do you think it would take for us to build back? To right now, well, there's been multiple thousands of years, thousands yeah. of years, but to the, this we, level, to the this engineers level. would stay alive. Like we would make the engineers write down, and like the software designers write down everything that they know. You know, write down on what? Oh, oh, oh true. It's about the infrastructure on caves. Yeah, because a lot of the knowledge, once you strip everything away, the knowledge is solely going to be in people's minds. They're going to be. They're going to know. I know this thing exists, but you can't go all the way down to the raw materials and build it. You know? But it takes also, time. Don't you think that the first? I think the first thing I would de- like if I was the leader, I would definitely designate a group of people to create paper as fast as possible, or to get ink. I would. Or to I get ink. That, we know how to get ink, would right? Be the most important way. I, th- I think it would be it? writing so, down everything so that is, we know. This is Minecraft. Is what we're saying. <laughs> Basically, I, we would get as many people as possible to get ink to harvest ink, and we would try to. We would figure out a way to either get paper. Like we could even like use the skin of pig and dry it out to create like scrolls or something. I don't think that's the. First, I think the first thing is food. Well, then, I know, but like we have enough people to designate people to different things. You know what I mean? Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I think. The only solid. issue with that is if you strip away everything, there's no way there's going to be large communities because at this point in humanity, mm. people will just be trying to kill each other. Or do you think just so? Just focus on survival. Do you think so? I, th- I yeah. think people would be. Well, I think people would group together and, and communize. Um, actually, that probably. Yeah. I mean, the, dude, if everything was stripped away, if we put everyone in a room, this is a guarantee. If you put everyone in a room with no special privileges, number one, the, in the world, the poor outweigh the rich, like 
nine to one if you put 10 people in the room, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're killing the rich person right away. If you have to I kill mean, someone. Money, money doesn't matter anymore. No, I know. But like someone, like that's the person who is way more out of touch with everyone else. Oh, because like there's no way they know how to do anything. No way they know how to do anything. What if you're like an like, engineer? What if you're an engineer? Or like a doctor? If you're a doctor, yeah. If you're an engineer, maybe. Yeah. If you're an engineer, yeah. If you're like like a tech CEO, if you're, if you're fucking Bill Gates, fuck out of here. You're getting killed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what if, you can do with all your tech when you literally don't even have a motherboard to operate off. Of yeah. Fuck. Dude, if you're a wall, if you're on, if you're a, like a hedge fund manager, you're, you're dead. You're getting executed. Like, yeah. If you made like money from a corporate style. merger, you're you dead. You have no translatable. If you're system. Elon Musk, your head will be the your cutoff head would be the yes. symbol of survival. Yeah. <laughs> That's my take. I don't know. Their take is so wrong. My take is wrong that humans will die. Yeah, <laughs> we I think I'm also wrong. Extinct. We I think I'm also wrong. I just kind of wanted to talk it out. Um, it's an interesting thought. You should write a novel about it, Cameron. Yeah, that can be well, your next project. Or once, a once, hot, show. once Hot Takes High Stakes has a Patreon, um, every week we're going to do little write-ups on our takes and put that behind the Patreon wall. And people will get to see like a, like a little paragraph, a little, a little more of what we have like to say. Like the lore. Yeah. Mm. And we'll put it all, we can put it all together into a book at the end of the day. We can a also compilation. do something where yeah. we gather all the takes and then... We act like those takes. So, for example, my take was that you're a child if you still eat runny eggs. Right. So, the world that would exist is that once you become an adult, you no longer eat full cooked yolks. So, like, that's the world. The, so, the world would be revolve around all our hot takes. Yeah. It would basically be the new physics of the world. Like, after, for me, after you become, you go through Peter, you would no longer like, Hard, over hard or fully cooked yolks so you would, right. and then with sam you there would be no electronic kitchen appliances yeah and what with me at one point in the world in, in the world history everything just has to go back to yeah you could definitely do lore and yeah shit. that'd be cool yeah or that maybe this is maybe we're maybe my take started at all and the new the new society was built back on the premise of all of the hot takes that we've had. Ooh, I like you know that. what I'm saying? Yeah. Every single hot take. Yeah. So like, Ever. so like, it's so like my take. It's like the new physics of the world. Yeah. My take started everything. I, we had to go back to day, to day one. And then like our hot takes are like scripture. It's like the, like the, the moral compass that the world developed. On. Yeah. So you're telling me we're, we're having eight day weeks. Oh, we're having eight day weeks. You're no telling me we're going to have to live with Ronick's takes. We have uppercase yeah. numbers, though. We do have uppercase numbers. Um, no one, That's huge. No one is allowed to show up to anything on time. Everyone has to be late. <laughs> All right. I like that. That's coming soon. The Hot Takes High Stakes movie. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. for like, If someone was to make a movie off this podcast, that would be... That would be the idea. We'll write it down. That everyone will live with these moral compasses. And then you list every single hot take. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the script. We're writing the script right now. Um, okay, hottest take time. Uh, let's restate well, our we takes. we haven't decided if we agree with you. Oh, right, right, right. Which we both disagree. So. Well, yeah, you both said yeah, that it was wrong. So. <laughs> yeah. um, hottest take time. I'll, let's restate our takes starting with me, then Sam, then Corey. My take was that if we reverted back to day one, of civilization, humanity would go would go extinct. Sam, what was your take? Replace or just eliminate all non-mechanical kitchen items that can be replaced. <laughs> yeah. You're still a child if you don't eat runny or gooey eggs and only eat over hard and fully mm. cooked yolks. Does everyone know who they're voting for? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll vote Corey first, then Sam, then me. In three, two, one. Cameron. Cameron. <laughs> Corey. 
God, I was really hoping that that take wouldn't win. <laughs> so I mean, it was just I a wrong won. take. You haven't, Corey? No. Oh, well. I think you should have won that time, but... Well, because take... I, I agreed with this take. My take was hot and bad, yeah. You can agree, but it can still be the hottest. That's true. Yeah. Hot take. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like the agreement is is basically how good it is, you know. Yeah. yeah. And the hot, the hot, the hottest take is how hot it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, I, we, I guess we. This is where the advanced stats come in, Resma. Resma, we need you to make these advanced stats. Um. Yeah. He. Uh. We like we need a stats. We need stats on who has had the most agreeable takes. Like who has been agreed with the most often. You know. Is this like a. Ooh. Qualitative or quantitative? We can have a tournament where if like your take gets agreed with, then you're out. <laughs> um, wait, what do you mean, Sam? Like, is it like an agreeableness number, or is it just like? No, like you, you know how like like Corey's take got two agrees this episode, and that's a hundred percent agreeal rate. But if you oh if you, okay okay if you agreement rate, but if you add agreeal, if you add um. If you add that to like other takes that he's had before, you know what I mean. Yes. Like it becomes a batting average of sorts. Yeah. Okay. So Razma, um, get on that, and that's that for this episode. Um, go subscribe to Mountain Men Vids on YouTube. We have some ideas coming up. I want to do this collective marathon soon. That'll be a pretty easy video to pull off. I think we just have to all get in the Zoom call at some point. All right. But um. Yeah, go subscribe to Mountain Men Vids, subscribe to Mountain Men Games, do all that. Go to pumpcoose.co to look at the leaderboards, the hottest take leaderboards, and all of the hottest takes that we've ever had. Give us love. <laughs> Just give us love. That's all, that's all we ask for. Um, and with that, we'll say goodbye. R- rate, rate and review the podcast. I don't know how many people even listen on a decent amount of people <laughs> listen on Apple podcasts actually. So, um, wait, really? Not like a t- not like a ton, but, um, like, like people listen than... as opposed to watch like the, pe- uh, the amount of people who listen are okay, roughly equal to the amount of people who watch. Yeah. So I rate mm. and review on Apple. Podcasts. Also the, the Pokemon episode ones are, Oh wait, you guys just did that, right? What? The Pokemon episode react. Or the whatever. watch. The, those are really funny. <laughs> so <laughs> so go the watch show those. Is so ridiculous. Yeah, go watch those on Mountain Men Games. Um, and we'll 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 see you, right? Yeah, Sam. Yeah. The outro. Uh, We've been waiting for you to a, do the outro, Sam. We just need some love. <laughs> All right, we'll see ya. <laughs> just give us some. Just give us love. Just give us love. And that's that. Bye, everyone. Pump Goops Podcast.